going to show you what basic tools you might think about buying if you're planning on fixing your own car. Now, being a professional mechanic, I have drawers and drawers and drawers of tools, but you don't need them all. To start out with, get a decent socket set with a ratchet. You can get a decent ratchet and socket set at any discount auto parts store. A lot of them give lifetime guarantees. Heck, you don't need to buy a really expensive set. I used to buy really expensive stuff, Snap-on, Matco, you name it, but hey, I buy these Duralast ones from AutoZone, as you can see here, it says guaranteed for life. If it ever breaks, I go three blocks down the street and get another one free. You can't beat that. And these days, hey, all the cars are metric, so make sure you get a metric set. <laughs> then, of course, if you're going to do any kind of suspension or brake work, you need a jack to jack the car up in the air. Now, as tempting as it may be, don't buy one of these little cheap jacks. They're just not stable enough. Get a nice solid jack. And heck, I got this low profile large jack at Harbor Freight Tools. It was only 20 bucks more than this tiny little one that I stick in the trunk for emergencies. And with the design of modern cars, make sure you get one of these low profile jacks so it actually fits under your car. But of course, if you have a truck or a higher vehicle, you can just get a plain jack that isn't low profile. And of course, get a good set of jack stands. I advise steel ones. The aluminum ones aren't quite as strong, even though they weigh less. <laughs> now, being a professional mechanic, I cheat and I use air tools. But then you have to buy a compressor and air tools and hoses and all kinds of stuff. So if you need power, you can just get a giant cheater bar and a socket and use that to get stuff nuts and bolts off. <laughs> And if that's not enough power, you can use the poor man's air wrench, a giant piece of pipe. Just stick it on the end of the cheater bar, you get so much leverage, anything easily comes off. Because yes, I have to admit it, I'm a tool fool. I'm one of those guys who goes out and buys tools because they look cool. I got tools in my garage, some of them I've actually never used to fix cars. So don't go buying all these fancy tools that you don't need yet. Now when it comes to working on any car that's 1996 or newer, you really need a halfway decent scan tool to analyze what's going on with the car. But don't think that's going to break the bank. There are scan tools out there that go anywhere from $50 to $200 when on sale that can do all kinds of stuff on your car. Now this particular model cost me $200 on sale at AutoZone, and it does an awful lot. I use it all the time as a professional mechanic. Let's say you got four or five guys. You could each pitch in with $40, bucks, buy one. And sure, you don't use it all that often, and it fits all the different cars, so why not go that route? Of course, you can go and buy a lower price one, but take my warning here. Do not buy one of those $20 or $30 Bluetooth ones that work on your phones, because I've seen them damage cars. At least buy one that's $50 or $60 that stand alone like this. When you use another device, as often there'll be interference. All you have to do is get the machine, plug it under the dash into the port, then it'll give you all kinds of information. You can read the codes, erase codes, tell you about the mill status, tell you if it'll pass the state OBD test. It'll view the live data, records data. They do all kinds of things that'll help you figure out what's wrong with your car. And let's say even if it gets over your head and gives you information that you can't figure out, at least you'll have codes. You'll have solid information. Then when you go somewhere, they can't rip you off because you got a reasonable amount of information and you can say, hey, here's what's going on with my car. And if they don't fix it right and it still has the same thing with the scanner, you'll know they didn't fix it right. But there's a lot you can figure out yourself. This car has P0110 code for intake air temperature sensor. Then you can just go to the internet and type P0110 for an 03 Sonata, which is what the car is. And when you Google that, you'll see there's all kinds of articles about what the problem is and how to fix it. Google to the rescue again. What would we do without it in our modern society? Now another basic tool I advise buying is a giant screwdriver. It makes a great pry bar when you have to pry things off, and it makes a great listening device when you're trying to find the source of car noises. And it's also a great emergency tool. Let's say you get in a wreck and the fender's rubbing on the tire. You can always get it in there and pry it away from the tire so you can at least drive home. And of course you want some basic hand tools like a good set of pliers, an assortment of different screwdrivers. But of course, you can buy those at any good discount auto parts store as a kit, like a handyman's tool kit, where you'll get them all together and don't have to pay the individual prices where they cost more. 
So now you know what kind of basic tools you need to start fixing your own car. And remember, if you do eventually need a specialist tool, hey, wait until you need it. Then when you go to get the part, buy the tool at the same place and save time and money that way. Because with a little imagination, you can make some basic tools do some pretty complex jobs. And remember, if you have any car questions, just visit the Scotty Kilmer channel.